name is Nikki Howard. I'm with the National Kidney Foundation of Indiana and welcome to Kidney Corner. Today is our fifth episode of Kidney Corner and up to now we've kind of talked about some clinical medical issues about kidney disease and today we're going to focus a little differently. We're going to talk about the personal financial challenges that kidney patients um, encounter and with us today to help us talk about these issues, we have some social workers. We have Deb Evans, and she's from St. Vincent Transplant. Thank you. And we have Heather Palmer, who is a dialysis social worker from Fresenius Medical Care. So thanks for coming today, ladies. Thank you. Well, let's uh, kind of start out by just helping people understand the training that goes into becoming a social worker because it's such a very important job. Um, to be a dialysis social worker, um, you have to have a master's degree in social work, and then you have to hold um, a license for the state. Um, you don't have to have a clinical license, but you do have to have be licensed as a social worker. Okay. And Deb, kind of similar? And or? for transplant, um, you do have to have a master's degree in social work, and um, all of us at St. Vin, well, all transplant social workers are licensed clinical social workers. And then some of us have a... Um, I'm a certified clinical transplant social worker through the Society of uh, Transplant Social Workers. Okay, okay. So in the day of a life of a social worker at your units, what kind of job duties do you do or what, what are some of the responsibilities that in, are involved? Um, first and foremost, I think we um, are educators for patients, educators for staff, um, introducing new patients. Um, to dialysis, um, assessing what their needs are, assessing um, what their resources are, and then identifying areas where we can um, help them um, to get what they need to be able to adjust and manage their illness. Yeah, it is a very challenging, life-changing mm -hmm. event, yeah. And then Deb, with the transplant? In transplant, there uh, at St. Vincent's, there are three social workers, and primarily, uh, a lot of what we do is doing evaluations prior to people being listed for transplant. Uh, Medicare requires a pretty thorough psychosocial evaluation to determine if people are candidates for a kidney transplant. So a lot of our work is done doing the, the evaluations. Uh, and then when people are listed for transplant, um, just <coughs> trying to keep in contact with people and answer questions. Sometimes people have to be put on hold for periods of time for medical reasons or other things. We try to keep into contact with them during that uh, period of time when they're listed for transplant. And then after transplant, we spend a lot of time with our patients either while they're in the hospital, <coughs> after the transplant, just helping them with the transition from being on dialysis or um, uh, <coughs> then having a transplant. And then when they come to clinics, uh, because they have to come to clinics very often after transplant. Mm -hmm. uh, we spend a lot of time with them talking about transition issues uh, to help them get used to having a transplant and being mm -hmm. back to a, quote, normal kind of life. Okay. So how do, um, like, family members and caretakers kind of fit into all this picture? Uh, I mean, because they can be a support as well for the patients. And, you, I'm, you know, you deal, you involved with the patient and you're involved with the family, mm -hmm. so... Uh, family members can provide a lot of support to patients. Um, they can really help them to manage the disease. So helping family members or friends or um, anyone that's important mm -hmm. in the patient's life that can be supportive and help them um, is important. So whatever kinds of education that we provide to our patients, it's also important for concerned and involved family members to know also so that they can um, provide whatever um, they can to help this person uh, manage their yeah. disease and um, maintain or improve a good quality of life. So they can do the things that they need and want to do mm -hmm. in life. Mm -hmm. Have you seen that similar with yeah. the transplant, <coughs> Deb? Uh, actually, having family members or uh, people that can provide care after transplant or support after a transplant is of vital importance. And so we spend a lot of time before the transplant getting to know the families, um, answering their questions about transplant, uh, uh, then after the transplant, they, they're very much involved in the education before people are discharged from the hospital, learning about all of their needs that they're going to have at home after the transplant. And then they um, usually come with them to their post-transplant clinics 
So they're very, very, family members are very involved mm -hmm. in the, the whole transplant process. Okay. Um, so what would you say would you find re the rewarding part and of your job and maybe the kind of most challenging parts of your job? Uh, the most rewarding part of my job is seeing patients um, set goals and achieve them. Um, knowing that um, some people, you know, they come in and they want to get a transplant and they need to lose weight before that. So they lose their weight and they get their transplant. For some people, it's raising their families, being there for their children. For some people, it's traveling, taking those trips mm -hmm. that they've always wanted to do. Um, so that's what I find rewarding is seeing people function right. um, as they would without the kidney disease. Um, and I think the most challenging part is um, seeing people who have difficulty with that. I mean, obviously people who have kidney disease um, require some form, some of them, some form of dialysis, but then they also have everything else that happens to us um, in our normal lives, depression, anxiety, substance abuse, cancer, um, life difficulties. So not only do they cope with those things, but then they have the kidney disease mm. to um, manage also. So sometimes it just seems like um, there's so much thrown um, at a person, um, it becomes difficult to, to um, ideally identify where to start. Yeah, so. we, we get calls at the Kidney Foundation sometimes and you can just hear people, the, the worry and the stress, it's just a, like I said, life altering until they definitely need you folks to well, help and them. And then the other thing I find challenging is just the fact <laughs> that the general population still doesn't always have an idea of what kidney disease is and what dialysis is and what that really requires. Yeah. Well, so we're, we're trying to work yes. on that <laughs> yes. at the Kidney Foundation. Yeah. Deb? You know, there are so many rewards in transplant. I've been in transplant 15 years, um, for the past four years at St. Vincent's, but I, you know, I think some of the biggest rewards are uh, helping people that may not have been a really good candidate for transplant uh, and helping them to kind of work through a lot of issues to then be able to be a candidate. For instance, um, I had a lady okay. that uh, was having problems with agoraphobia, and so she wasn't able to even get to her appointments or... Would you um, want to just tell what that is? Agoraphobia is a fear of leaving the house. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's an anxiety disorder. Mm -hmm. And I uh, was able to work with her and the dialysis unit to then help her to get into some treatment for her agoraphobia. And she got to a place where she um, was basically discharged from treatment. She was able to drive again. She was able wow. to go to appointments. And um, and she was just transplanted recently. So those are big rewards yeah, from that, a social yeah. work perspective, being able to help people through those kinds of issues. Uh, she overcame quite a bit. Yes, 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 yes. Very excited for her. Um, you know, other times just being able to help people find their medications. Sometimes they have changes in insurance or changes with, with their finances mm -hmm. after the transplant and they have difficulty getting their medicine. Sometimes that's a big reward yeah. is being able to help people um, just with something simple like that because if they don't have their medication even one day, they can start to reject the kidney. So medication yeah. is really important. Yeah. Um, so simple things like that or, or helping with return to work issues. Some people haven't worked for many years while they were on dialysis and then being able to help them to be get back to again, work right. That's um, and be productive goal. again and work with them for yeah. referrals like to vocational rehabilitation or agencies like that okay. to help them get back to work. Those are, those are always um, uh, big rewards for us. Well, I know you guys are just so important to the success of the patients, so we really value and appreciate everything that you day, do day in and day out. And uh, we're going to be back in a minute and uh, talk further with um, Heather and one of her patients, so stay tuned. <laughs> You know, uh, when Margaret and I decided to sell the old estate here, we had uh, only one choice in signage. Logan Street signs and banners. Conveniently not located on Logan Street anymore, but rather located on 10th Street on the south side of Noblesville. Well, we sold the old beauty and we were able to buy this wonderful estate. And we had so much money left over, I was able to buy this beautiful 1968 Eldorado Cadillac for Margaret. Only 472,000 miles. Margaret loves it because it's got those big seats and that heavy-duty suspension to support her Schvelt frame. 
Next time you're looking for signs or banners, call old Jim at Logan Street Signs and Banners, 773-7200. Conveniently not located on Logan Street anymore. Everyone knows it's easy to find first-run movies in the big theaters. But where can you go to watch your favorite classic movies on the big screen for the perfect night out? Why rent a flick when you can rent the entire theater? Call today to reserve our 32-seat theater for your next event or just stop by to see what's showing this weekend. The 14 by 7 foot screen and the high quality digital surround sound system offers all the amenities you would expect from the big theaters with a laid back atmosphere and comfortable seating of your own home. Wathart Theater at 1744 South 10th Street in Noblesville gives you the classic movies you want with a big theater experience. Welcome back to Kidney Corner, and today we're talking about emotional, financial, kind of caretaker issues that go along with kidney disease. And we just heard from Heather Palmer, who's a social worker at Fresenius Medical Care, and we also have with us Mike Esra. So yeah. thanks for joining us today. You're welcome. And uh, Mike, we just wanted to ask you some questions, and we appreciate your willingness to share with us. Uh, and I know that you know when you first found out about kidney disease, it's probably you know, life altering, and so you had a lot of emotions and such. So, how did you begin to process all this and 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 deal with the diagnosis? Well, it was pretty devastating at first. Yeah. But that was 18 years ago, so I've learned how to handle it over 18 years. And you've had, you've been on dialysis. I've done every type of dialysis. I've had a transplant. I lost my transplant. Now I'm back doing dialysis again. Okay, okay. And Heather is your social worker? Correct. Yes. So, so Heather, and she does a good job. Well, good. I'm <laughs> yeah. glad. I'm, yeah. I have no doubt that yeah. she does. Uh, so, how, Heather, how did you help Mike figure out his finances for, tran uh, for kidneys and dialysis? So I know you had some slides here about how you can help pay for uh, trans or kidney dialysis. Um, Dialysis um, is expensive, however, there are um, insurance programs that help and assistance programs to help people obtain insurance. Um, Medicare is um, one of the payers for dialysis um, and it will pay for 80% um, of treatment and most people with kidney disease can um, obtain Medicare. There are, uh, there's also a Medigap policy that um, will help supplement um, the Medicare and it will pay for the remaining 20%. Um, then for people under 65 or even over 65, Medicaid will also assist in paying um, for dialysis. Some people also work so their employer's insurance will also um, help pay for that. So if you could go to the slide mm -hmm. and how um, employer's insurance works. Okay, sure. Um, one thing to remember with Medicare coverage is that um, if you're under the age of 65, um, it will begin on the first day of the fourth month that you start dialysis. Um, but it also can start on the first day that you start dialysis if you take part in a home dialysis training program. Um, you're expected to finish a training program and do home dialysis or the regular course of dialysis is maintained through the waiting period that would otherwise apply. Heather, I did have a quick question on that. So if someone doesn't start dialysis right away, I mean start the uh, insurance right away, Medicare, how is that period covered in there in that lapse? Um, the supplemental insurance will help to cover that, but Medicare begins on that fourth day or fourth month of dialysis. Okay, okay. Um, and with the employer uh, group coverage, um, most private and employer insurances help pay for dialysis um, and there's something called the 30 month uh, coordination period. So your employer's insurance will cover for 30 months um, as the primary payer and then when that 30 months is over, the Medicare will become the primary payer and your employer's insurance will become the secondary payer. Kind of switches. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. 
Um, so now, Mike, do you have a supporters in your family that help you out, or um, you know, what's my your support? My wife was my big support. Support system. But she died three years ago. Oh, okay. But she's the one that got me through the first one and the transplant and all that. Now okay. I have a daughter that does the same thing. Okay, well that's good. But I was on Medicare when I was under 65. Okay. And it worked well for me. Good, good. Now you're still, from what I hear, very active and um, you have a business and so that keeps you busy. Might go on vacation quite <laughs> that, often. That's good, yeah. Yep. Good, good. Still run a business. So. Okay, okay. So you haven't let uh, kidney disease and dialysis slow uh, you down too much. I'm a little bullheaded and I think that's what keeps me going. Because okay. I know that the dialysis takes two hours of my day. Oh, you do home dialysis? I do home dialysis. Okay. Peritoneal dialysis. Oh, peritoneal. peritoneal. Okay. And it takes two hours of my day, but the other 22 hours of mine. So that's how I end up. Yeah. So <laughs> if you had a, a new person that uh, is just starting all this out, what, what kind of uh, words of wisdom or advice would you, anything that you would share with them? No, face it head on. Get all the facts you can get. <laughs> The more you know, the better off mm -hmm. you are. Right. I always told the doctors, don't hold anything back. You know, Knowledge tell me. is I can power. Face it. I can face <laughs> it better if I know what it is than wondering what it's going to be. Yeah, so. yeah. And then also depend on your social workers, too, to help guide you. Yeah, you got to have them. Yeah. Yeah. And Heather, I know you have a support group that you operate, and it's been going on for a while now. That's, that's about four what, years. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Can you tell us like the type of folks that come to the support group? I mean, it's not just dialysis, I understand. Mm -hmm. right? It's for anyone diagnosed with any stage of kidney disease. And what we know is uh, men and women um, who have kidney disease need the support of their friends and family. However, sometimes that support might not be enough. And it's really um, beneficial for folks with kidney disease to be around other people with the same diagnosis. Um, it really helps to get advice. Um, it, it really helps to get support from them. And then also, you may also be a support to someone else. So. Um, Again, just being able to sit with someone who is is successfully managing it, and just mm -hmm. to really know that you're not alone. I think sometimes the kidney disease, um, you may feel like you are alone, and no one really understands. Even your friends and family um, don't understand. But sitting next to someone who um, shares your your concerns is um, validating. Mm -hmm. And then the type of uh subjects that you have we, for we talk about everything we talk about depression we talk about exercise we talk about diabetes we talk about um, access finances I mean you know anything that um, you need to manage a disease um, anything that um, will increase your quality of life give you knowledge um, it, it's all fair game okay okay a good example is the couple that was there last time mm -hmm. when they first came in they were so scared, they could tell in their voice okay. that they were scared. Mm -hmm. And by the time the meeting was over, they said, we feel better now. Yeah, so you guys learn to kind of support and help each other. Right. And, and becomes, I'm sure, kind of friends and a social uh, environment as well. Now, do you guys do things outside the... Uh, any we haven't ventured there yet. Okay. But um, it really is to see people grow and develop who've been attending um, they, because they can come and see that um, life may be a little different on kidney disease, but if you still, you know, have things that you want to do, um, goals you want to accomplish and memories to make, then um, then there are certain things you need to do. And the more, better you can take care of yourself, the better quality of life you're mm -hmm. going to have. Well, and I imagine it becomes like a second family too. You mm -hmm. see th these folks a lot uh, mm -hmm. going to dialysis and. Yes. Okay. Well, um, any other things you'd like to share with us today, Mike, about uh, helping other dialysis patients? Or? No, I don't really think of anything. Okay. Well, we're glad that you're doing so well, and that you're a role model for other dialysis yeah, patients. Yeah, and, so and anxious to get a transplant. You keep up the good work. Yep. Well, oh, well. We'll hope for that for yep. the new year, okay? That, yeah, it'll be a good one. All right. Okay, well, we'll be right back with a, a transplant discussion with social worker and a transplant patient. Thank you. You know, uh, 
when Margaret and I decided to sell the old estate here, we had uh, only one choice in signage. Logan Street signs and banners. Conveniently not located on Logan Street anymore, but rather located on 10th Street on the south side of Noblesville. Well, we sold the old beauty, and we were able to buy this wonderful estate. And we had so much money left over, I was able to buy this beautiful 1968 Eldorado Cadillac for Margaret. Only 472,000 miles. Margaret loves it because it's got those big seats and that heavy-duty suspension to support her schvelt frame. Next time you're looking for signs or banners, call old Jim at Logan Street Signs and Banners, 773-7200. Conveniently not located on Logan Street anymore. Everyone knows it's easy to find first-run movies in the big theaters. But where can you go to watch your favorite classic movies on the big screen for the perfect night out? Why rent a flick when you can rent the entire theater? Call today to reserve our 32-seat theater for your next event or just stop by to see what's showing this weekend. The 14 by 7 foot screen and the high quality digital surround sound system offers all the amenities you would expect from the big theaters with a laid back atmosphere and comfortable seating of your own home. Wofford Theater at 1744 South 10th Street in Noblesville gives you the classic movies you want with a big theater experience. Welcome back to Kidney Corner and today we are discussing the emotional and financial and some caretaker issues surrounding kidney disease and uh, we've focused just on dialysis and now we're going to talk about transplant and we welcome back Deb who's a social worker at St. Vincent transplant social worker and we have Cicely Taylor who has a, a Plant. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, Cicely, how long have you had your transplant? Um, I have, I've had it for seven months. I got it back in May. Okay. This year. Okay. And I know that uh, it was a big decision. There was a lot of thought that must go into that. So, how did you kind of uh, prepare and process and to make that decision? Absolutely. Uh, it is a, a big decision. Uh, but I did have the education starting out uh, with the um, social worker team at uh, St. Vincent Transplant Clinic. Um, they did a very thorough job in explaining everything that you know I would face in the event um, the transplant would come. Um, and then I had a lot of uh, help with my, my family, especially my husband. The disease I have, it, can, it has a 50-50 chance of coming back into my transplanted kidney. Mm -hmm. And so I was just kind of apprehensive, and mm -hmm. after talking with him, we decided to go ahead and be placed on the list. Okay, okay, well, yeah. and it worked out, didn't it? It, it worked yeah. out, <laughs> absolutely. Good. Hate to say he was right. Oh, <laughs> sometimes we have to, don't we? Yes. Okay, um, and emotionally, uh, was it a up and down ba uh, roller coaster kind of thing? Or Yes, it was, um, because going from not having any health issues and then one day you're sick, and then months later having to be on dialysis it was it, yeah it really was and it was very confusing um a lot i didn't understand um you go through a lot of emotions you know bitterness you know you go through the anger um when you're placed on dialysis and you have all these surgeries and these tubes and then you just kind of feel depressed it kind of you know goes along with your um your self-esteem mm -hmm. and and you know how you feel as a person and so there's a lot that's bundled in with that whole yeah, process. Yeah. Well, and it just shows the importance of a support system. Absolutely when you're going so. Through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, Deb, I know you uh, helped with uh, some financial issues here. So, how to? What are some kinds of options for covering the transplant costs? Well, um, transplant, <laughs> of course, is, is is an expensive proposition, um, and most transplants are paid, uh, the, let me back up, the insurance issues can be very complicated mm -hmm. with transplant, mm -hmm. very complicated, and um, but I'll try to say it very, very quickly. Um, primarily people get in, uh, transplant paid for three ways, with Medicare, 
uh, and Medicaid or group health insurances through employers. Um, and most people have Medicare because they've been on dialysis. Um, also nowadays, some people do have the Healthy Indiana Plan or HIP, which is the Medicaid expansion insurance, or healthcare exchanges um, oh. through the healthcare uh, reform act. And it gets complicated because people that are under 65 in the state of Indiana, if they get Medicare, they aren't eligible for HIP or the health care exchanges. And there aren't any supplements to Medicare for people under the age of 65. And um, they have to have a 20% coverage for their medications after mm -hmm. the transplant. Those are medications they have to take yes. the rest and of their lives. and the medications are very costly. Mm -hmm. And Medicare Part B will pay 80% of those medications, but then the 20% that's left over is still very expensive. So they have to have something besides Medicare to help pay for their uh, medications uh, after the transplant. So um, there is a new program through Medicaid called Medicaid ESRD, or end-stage renal disease Medicaid. Oh. And I think in June or July, the income guideline is supposed to go up to 300% of poverty. So we're hopeful that um, some people will be eligible for Medicaid okay. to help them with their Medicare. Yeah. Um, uh, so those are the primary ways that people's insurance uh, transplant it, gets it paid for. It does get complicated, but that's yeah. another um, guidance and support that and the we, social And we do have a financial provides. coordinator. Uh, his name is John Walden <laughs> that can uh, advise and help our pa transplant yes. patients both before transplant and uh, then answer questions after the transplant. So. Uh, we try to get those questions answered because things do change and people right. have lots of do. questions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, and you have to think about all these things ahead of time too. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so Cicely, uh, what kind of advice would you have for maybe some people that are watching that may be contemplating uh, pursuing a transplant? I would say do it. Um, even though, you know, there's always what if or the maybe, um, I would honestly say I think my life has what people would say regained its normalcy. Um, just by receiving the, the kidney. Um, I have just had a tremendous big support, not only from my family, but also from the transplant team at St. Vincent. They have been really awesome from the physicians to the surgeons, to the nurses, to the coordinator. I mean, everyone has played such a great, great role. Um, and it's, it's good to make sure that you have a great support system in your family. Uh, someone that, you know, make sure you're educating your family mm -hmm. so that they know they won't be able to relate exactly to what you're going through, but they most definitely can have empathy and understand. And as long as they're armed with that information and that education, it, it turns out to be a great process. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. good. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Thank I'm glad you, that you so much. had success with that. Yes. Um, so. I think at this time I'm going to talk a little bit about some upcoming events we have it, uh, with the Kidney Foundation. We are um, getting close to our season of, of busyness and uh, in fact March is going to be March's Kidney Month and uh, we try and have various events throughout the state. So we start off March 4th we're going to have what we call the Cleat Symposium for Kidney Health Professionals and that will be here in Indianapolis. And then March 10th is uh, World Kidney Day, and we'll be having um, maybe a screening going on. You can check our website, which I'll show here at the end for a bit. And then March 17th, we always participate in the parade, which is uh, downtown, the St. Patrick's Day Parade. So, hey, I invite all you guys to be in our, our walking group. and. Uh, <laughs> We have Billy the Kidney that comes with us, and <laughs> the crowd loves Billy, I'll tell you, on St. Patrick's Day. Uh, March 23rd, we're going to have a Jersey Mike. That's a restaurant a day of giving in Fort Wayne. So if you live in Fort Wayne, you're watching the show, make sure you go there March 23rd and get something to eat, and uh, some portion of that will support the Kidney Foundation. And then we will have a free health screening, hopefully, coming up in that month. Uh, as far as kidney walks, we're going to have a lot of those. Uh, Merrillville, Evansville, Mishawaka, Indianapolis, and Fort Wayne. So check our website for that as well. And then uh, the transplant, Donate Life uh, Transplant Games of America happens every uh, other year in the United States and, every, and then every e odd year uh, internationally. So this year it's going to be in Cleveland, 
and um, if there's any uh, transplant recipients, uh, donor families, or living donors, uh, we'd love to have you as part of our team, so contact our office. And uh, as promised, here's our website and our phone number. So thank you for joining us today, and thanks to all of our guests. And we us. hope everybody out there has a great holiday and that the new year brings them many good blessings. So see you in January.